Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here, a little something we like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? And, um, this one we're not going to cover too in depth, I'm just marveling on it because it's one of those, this is one of those stories that, uh, it's like, you cannot believe this happened twice. And yet it has. Um, this one comes to us from, uh, the Czech Republic. And a while back, we had a place in America where someone stole a whole fucking bridge. Happened yes. again! Oh my god, really? In the Czech Republic! These make off with 10-ton bridge and, to up the game, a railroad track. I'm telling you, Fringe, the show Fringe, that's like a fucking duck. You know how William Gibson predict predicted the internet? Yes. And like holographic performers? The Fringe people totally predict there's an alternate universe with like mirrors of all of us, except over there, like, I'm really angry and you're, you like hippos or something. But... And and that's that that shit's going on. Like they're just making the bridges disappear so that the evil well, Secretary of Defense from over there can't come over here. It trust it, it's all going down. Well, actually, this one's a little more pedestrian explanation. Um, claiming to be a demolition crew, con men turned thieves showed up at a train station in Slavkov with forged papers saying the bridge had been condemned and the unused railroad track was supposed to be torn up and make way for a new bicycle path. So pretty much they went in with fake papers saying, hey, this bridge got to go. And everybody's like, okay, this bridge got to go. Okay. Still, this is now officially the second and time. And they let them take the whole thing down before yes. anybody thought to check on that. Yep. Like nobody thought to call their boss and be like, hey, are we dismantling the bridge? No, nope. before they just let the people dismantle them. Because I'm thinking that took some time. Yeah. Like, you don't just unhook a couple of latches and take the bridge with you. Yeah, you, it's tools and shit. Someone is more fired than you oh, could yeah. ever believe humanly possible. Oh, yeah. Someone, someone is fired from their next three jobs. This isn't going on a resume. This, this is so not, uh, why would you steal a bridge? Because the They will not metal. be getting a reference from their former employer. So now that we've covered that, let's, let's go straight head on barreling into crazy. We have naked crazy coming out of the gate. And this is, this is one of those headlines that when you see it, it's like, yep, it's us. Um, Muncie, Indiana. Hi to all you, um. Knights of the uh, Dinner Table fans. Um, Holy... ah, look at that picture. What? Look at that picture. I'm looking at the picture. Look, look, everybody look at the picture. Look at that picture. Check that shit out. Here's the headline. Police nude man steals truck, crashes through home. Um... Aaron Zachary Latham was receiving tr treatment Friday at uh, uh, IU Health Ball Memorial Hospital, okay, where he's expected to be arrested upon his release on a variety of charges, including driving while intoxicated, criminal mischief, auto theft, and resisting law enforcement. Uh, he's listed in fair condition. Oh, there's an unfortunate name. What? Captain Rick Richmond. Rick Richmond. What the fuck parents name their child Richard Richmond? Richard Richmond. Um, according to Captain Richmond, a uh, caller reported a nude man, later identified as Latham, had climbed an electric pole. Latham eventually came oh, down from the pole. Know, yeah, splinters. The first thing you're yeah, thinking is splinters. In places, you because how do you climb a pole? You gotta like hug that pole a little yeah. bit. So where are those splinters going? Not fun places. Not fun places. He eventually came down from the pole and then ran from the scene. Well, yeah, because he's got splitters in his dick. I'd be running too. No, uh, you wouldn't. You'd be. You'd be. Yeah, kind of uh, fetal position. Yeah, yeah. Um, Making 
squeaky sounds. It gets better, which is not the, the meaning of the word better, I know, but um, that's when Lathan reportedly ran into the path of Blake Bullock, who was driving home in his 2007 Chevrolet pickup truck. He jumped in front of my truck, and he was naked, and I thought it was a prank or something. Uh, I was honking at him, and he started ramming his head into my front bumper over and over again. Bullock, a junior at Central High School, said he got out of his truck to try to assist the man when Latham started running toward him. Now, you are a high school kid. You have tried to do the nice thing. Get out of your car to help a man who is clearly not well. He has just been slamming his head into the bumper of your truck. Now he's running at you. This is the kid who did the smartest thing ever. He ran the shit away. Yeah. You can get the truck fixed. You can't, like, get a new nose after this crazy fucker bites yours off. No! No! Because if this guy or is... start singing goodbye horses. Yes! The amount of therapy. <laughs> And, and Bullock said, I ran away not thinking he was going to hop in my truck. Who the fuck would? Yeah, but Latham did just that, getting in the driver's seat and taking off at what Bullock estimated was around 50 miles per hour into the home at 2901 West Skylark Drive. Oh, oh, here's your favorite phrase. Police on Friday were investigating what would cause Latham to go on his new nude rampage. Rampage. He was not very cooperative throughout the incident. What a surprise. No. What a surprise that this gentleman climbing telephone poles naked and ramming his head into truck bumpers wasn't cooperative with the police. <laughs> oh, to, to be even better, he's on two years probation uh, because he was among a group of men who reportedly burned a cross in the backyard of a black woman. Oh, so, fuck a whole bowl of that guy. Yeah, no sympathy here. None for this guy. Fuck uh, Jesus Christ, this is. But every time I hear the phrase nude rampage, the first thing that came comes into my head is is Uma Thurman in that bit for Kill Bill. I rampaged and I, I roared, roared. And I rampaged. Yeah. <laughs> and I got, first, I guess, and I, I ran a now, truck into someone's house. I guess now we know what they wear under those robes. Mm. No. Thing. Nothing. Apparently, the KKK goes Scottish traditional. Just, Who knew? <laughs> Just fuck this guy. What happened, man? Drugs, I imagine. Probably we're going to find out it was fucking bath salts because these people and the bath salts or like meth or something or. I always thought you take drugs to feel better. I even recreationally, I thought you take, you know, you smoke some pot because you feel a little high, you feel mellow. I thought you take some meth, you feel sharper, you feel up. Uh, who would Doing take a show? Hasn't I just dis disabuse you of that delusion? You take LSD, you expand your consciousness. I, I don't, I can't imagine a drug dealer on a corner going, "Hey, yo, man, yo, man, you want to get naked, and smash somebody else's truck into a fucking house?" I got drugs. I got drugs. Make you naked. Smash. Who would be going? I think That's I actually know I mean. people that would totally be down with that offer, though. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I want to get naked and smash someone's truck up. What you got? Yeah. yeah. I, and you probably do, too. Let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Let's, let's go into... Uh, this is... All right, it's Florida. Start off. Florida! And this Everybody is, take a shot. Yeah. This is one of those times where you got to wonder, is he this stupid to think this excuse would work? Or is he serious? Or both? Um, this comes to us from uh, Gainesville with a very clever headline. I might add. This is this is one of the more clever headlines. We we learn to appreciate these headlines. Police man fled accident scene to avoid having an accident. <laughs> A 29-year-old Gainesville man told police he left the scene of an accident Tuesday 
because he was afraid he was going to have an accident of another kind. Uh, Bernard Cato III was charged with DUI, hit and run, leaving the scene of an accident involving injury, third degree felony, after he crashed uh, his car into another vehicle and newspaper boxes. According to the police department, Cato left the scene and ran toward the nearby Walmart store where he was found a few minutes later. Uh, he had the strong al- odor of alcohol emanating from his be- breath and clothing, and his eyes were bloodshot I'm and watery. To hear that, he declined to give a breathalyzer test. According to report, adding, "I didn't realize I hit somebody. I pulled into the next stop. I had the runs. I had to go." I buy it. You do really. I think he was just that fucking drunk. Because I... I mean, I don't know about the I was going to have an accident thing. I can't attest to that. But I have been drunk enough that I repeatedly hit my head on something and was not aware. Like, we were at a convention and we were at one of the room parties and I was sitting on the bed and like three or four times I hit my head on the headboard just laughing or whatever, you know, at something somebody said. And totally didn't notice until someone would be like, oh, my God, are you OK? And I go, why? Well, you just hit your head. Oh, is that what that sound was? I thought I heard something. <laughs> See, I was about to say, we said, noticed I repeat- the next day. We well, said I repeatedly hit my head on something. I'm like, were you naked ramming your head to the bumper of a truck? No, I, I don't. OK. Run around naked when drunk. Sorry to disappoint you all. But uh, but yeah, I just so I, I you know. <sighs> I buy, I was so drunk and so focused on that I had to pee or whatever other business he had to do that I just totally didn't notice I hit that stuff. I buy it. <laughs> but the idea that he thinks this is... That this... Well, it's not going to get him off the hook, but I believe that it's true. Do you think he thought it would, though? No, dude, I called potty emergency. No, No. you can't arrest me. Potty emergency. That's how it works. Do you really think... Animaniacs defense? (laughs) Yes, pretty much. It's... Yes, I only run around naked when cow tipping. Yeah. It's true. I just... I... (sighs) He th- part of his brain went, this is the perfect idea. No, I think part of his brain went... <laughs> I gotta poop. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. That was pretty much his whole brain, and the rest of it he missed, and, you know. The next one, uh, this is the police blotter. It's just the first, uh, just the first part of it. But it's baffling nonetheless, and yeah, it's it's more crazy, and it's more naked, and it's more Florida, so, you know, it's it's completely our wheelhouse at this point. Um, West Palm Beach, indecent exposure. When a woman heard someone knocking at the door of her apartment uh, at 5 a.m., she went to investigate. She looked out the peephole to see her 31-year-old male neighbor standing there naked. She walked away only to hear the doorknob jiggling as the man tried to open the door. woman called security, who in turn turn called the police. As an officer spoke to the neighbor, who denied standing naked in front of his neighbor's door, he said it was a friend. He declined to provide police with the name of the friend and said he would take full responsibility for the incident. He also mentioned that he had been drinking and had, quote, one too many. One? Just one? One? Yeah, if you're naked in front of your neighbor's house, trying to get into their house, trying to get in, jiggling the door, that's like horror movie shit. We've seen that a million times. He probably thought it was his house. How many times have we done stories about people who are like cooking themselves a three course meal in someone else's house, drunk and probably naked because they thought it was their house? That's that. That's going to be the next Wes Craven, though. It's not going to be like Freddy or Jason or anything. It's going to be a naked drunk guy. Naked drunk guy making scrambled eggs. Trying to get into your house. How many times have we seen these stories? Usually when we get them, they're already in the house. Yeah. We don't usually get to be thwarted 
naked is drunk freak in a tent. inside the house. That's double entendre. It is. It is. Smart. So is that like a porn horror movie then? You know, I'm amazed someone hasn't made that yet. <laughs> How did he think that was going to... No, no, it was my friend. Really. It was... Oh, yeah? Uh, what friend? Oh, no, it's my friend, but I'll take responsibility. Does your friend talk to you inside your head? Ah, <sighs> all my friends are invisible. Maybe his friend stole his clothes. <laughs> and maybe his friend was trying to kill him, and he was having a horror movie situation in his house, and he ran to the neighbors, like people always do in horror movies, and the neighbor never answers the door when someone's trying to kill you in your house. And he was just looking for help, because somebody slashed all his clothes off with, like, a machete and was trying to kill him. Too much thought into this one. <laughs> Too much. I can make anything make sense. If you call that sense. <laughs> it's a certain kind of sense. This one's from Vermont. And it's, it's short, sweet, and to the point. I'm... I, I got a little, little baffled by this one. Teen sledgehammer rampage over cell phone shutoff. Roxbury, Vermont. His parents took away his cell phone... So a Roxbury teenager went on a rampage with a sledgehammer. It happened Wednesday. Police said a 15-year-old boy got upset because his parents had his cell phone shut off. So he took a sledgehammer and started swinging, causing damage to his parents' home. The boy's name is not released. He's charged with unlawful mischief. Can we talk about the damn kids today? By all means. Back in my day... Back in the fucking Stone Age, when I was a kid in the 90s, we didn't have cell phones. No. You didn't get to text your friends. You didn't get to call. Like, you had to use your parents' phone, which was attached to the wall and had a cord to call your friends. Like, a cell phone is not a fucking right, damn whippersnappers. <laughs> Hey, kids, get out of my lawn. My 13-year-old nephew on Easter Sunday was like, you need to convince my mom to buy me an iPhone. I need an iPhone. All my friends have an iPhone. I really need a phone. And I'm like, no, you're 13. You don't need a fucking iPhone. Are you kidding me? Who are you going to call? Don't say Ghostbusters. I swear to God, I will reach through the internet and slap you. Well, the, the iPhone really isn't about calling anybody anymore. Honestly. But that's the thing. He has an iPod that does everything the iPhone does, right. except make calls. So I'm like, what do you need an iPhone for? Well, because I need it. No, you don't. You're 13. But I, I sincerely doubt he would have responded to the denial no. with a sledgehammer. No, and that's the thing with the damn kids today. <laughs> like... You're not entitled to that fucking phone. That's not a right. It's a, it's, it's a privilege that you probably shouldn't even have if you're a little shit that tends to sledgehammer stuff when you don't get your way. But you're how often never going to have a phone again. How often does this happen, though? You know, just gets denied something, goes straight for the sledgehammer. You'd think they would have gotten rid of the sledgehammer by now. I feel like if this happened that often that they would have had to get rid of the sledgehammer, then he would probably already be in juvie. Why go to the sledgehammer? Why is... Because kids today don't understand the word no. Because the damn kids today, that's why. Believe me, I work, I work retail, dude. Like, I used to work a fitting room at the Old Navy, and I had this... Uh, the, kid, the way these fucking teenagers talk to their parents, like, I would never have gotten out of my room again. Yes, but even, like, even at 15, I understood that not... By, if I wasn't going to get my way about something, were I to destroy shit, this was not going to bolster my case. Yes. But it, it just... 
they don't they don't they don't go outside <laughs> they have all this pent up fucking energy yeah 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 and kids all the technology today, today, and tr- yeah. i'm telling you the problem is the damn kids today that's the whole explanation for that story why can't they be like we were perfect in every way i wasn't perfect i was a little uh. shit but <laughs> my parents were strict and like I would never have gotten away with treating my parents the way kids do to that. And I certainly wouldn't have gotten away with wrecking the fucking house with a sledgehammer. I would still be locked in that basement. And my parents have moved out of that house. But I would still be locked in that basement for the next tenants to deal with. <sighs> Speaking of I've smashing so shit. Old. I'm just a grumpy old lady. Aw, but we love you. Speaking of smashing shit. Um... This is probably the most novel defense for for what's going on here. And honestly, looking at the guy, I believe he believed this. This is from New Orleans, Metrier. Um, a cute serial mailbox basher didn't know it was illegal. Metrier man is accused of running over 10 mailboxes with his pickup truck. He told investigators... He didn't know it was illegal, according to the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office report. Um, Matthew Burghardt allegedly mowed down mailboxes on Aaron Boulevard, including his own neighbor's mailbox, twice! Why? Um, a neighbor who lives within a stone's throw of his residence uh, called the Sheriff's Office on Saturday afternoon. After she saw uh, Burghardt's truck drive over her mailbox... Uh, the r- r- woman told deputies she immediately recognized the truck and its driver because Berghardt had been her neighbor for 15 years. She said it was the second time that day the mailbox had been plowed over. That day? That day! Well, Debbie was taking statements. A resident from the 200 block of uh, Trefney uh, walked over to tell him someone had damaged her mailbox, too. The plot thickened. Oh, God. I love when these articles get, have phrases like the plot thickened. When a second deputy arrived with word that he was handling several mailbox hit and run five miles away, all involving the same black and red Dodge Ram pickup truck. Deputy, deputy identified Burkhart as a suspect using video surveillance recordings from one incident and witnesses who recorded the truck's license plate and two others. It was during the stop when they finally got him that uh, Burkhart told deputies he didn't know it was illegal to run over mailboxes. I fully believe this. How old is this person? Obviously older than a teenager because he lived somewhere 15, 15 years. I fully believe this. I believe this guy. Look at this guy. Look at this fucking guy. Put him on the big screen. This fucking guy. I believe this guy woke up that morning and it just occurred to him hey running over mailboxes. Why? No- that can't be illegal because no one's ever done it before. Well, why is that what you do for fun? Like, there is no place in the world that is that boring. I don't think it was for fun. I think it just, the idea occurred to him and he thought he was a genius. What's genius about that? Phase one, wreck mailboxes. Phase two... This is a guy who thinks it's not Phase illegal. Three, there is no profit because how do you make money? Out? Like, what was the goal? The goal was, hey, it's not illegal, so I can do it. You got to have a goal. You can't be a hooker forever. You got to have a goal. What was the goal? The goal like, was he came up with, with an idea that no one had ever thought of. Now, obviously... This has, in fact, been thought of a billion times before, but I have no trouble believing that this guy, this guy, I have no trouble believing he thought this was a unique and amazing discovery. I have no, well, no problem he's believing. he's going to make a lot of unique and amazing discoveries in federal pound me in the ass prison. Yeah. Actually, no, here's the kicker. I think he was, uh, no, no, he was arrested. Bond was set for yeah, eight counts of hit and run driving. Well, and yeah, he ain't destroying a mailbox is a federal crime. Yep, because that's federal offense. Because you don't fuck with the postal service, like 
You don't fuck with the mail. I honestly believe he woke up and just had that eureka moment. No, I, I think he was just this. really, really bored. Like, I think this is a guy who needs a hobby. Hate like, counts of hit and run federal events or something, something constructive. He's got plenty of time to learn a trade. Maybe, maybe yes. rock carving that worked for Andy Dufresne. Andy Dufresne, rock carving, you know. Not, Is that a reference I should know? You haven't seen Shawshank. I'm I haven't. No, I'm that's one of the many, like, that's one of the many pop culture compulsory movies that I have never seen, like, that I get yelled at about a lot. I get yelled at that I haven't seen The Goonies. That's good. That it's I'm, on. T- it's on TNT every day. Shawshank. Right, well, I, I don't have television. Oh, okay. My my TV has been broken for months. Yeah. But I I get yelled at a lot that I've never seen The Godfather. I've only seen the special editions of Star Wars. I saw them each once in the theater. Yeah, I there's a lot of like pop culture sacred cows that I'm like, yeah, I've heard of that that one time. Great, you gave me a segue there. Speaking of sacred cows. <laughs> we have more God. More God shit. Oh, good. And it's Florida. We're West Palm Beach, same place in Florida. Motherfucker. Busy week down in West Palm Beach. Oh, my God. Um, West Palm Beach, man, claiming to be, quote, profit. Charged with wrecking Stewart store vehicles. A man claiming to be a prophet sent by God to, quote, get rid of the devil's evil doings. Faces criminal charges for for destroying Psychic Corner and several vehicles. Police on Sunday charged Michael Novakta. Novakta? I think that's it. 26 of uh, West Palm Beach. Novakta. Novakta. No vodka indeed, sir. No vodka for you. Uh, Charged with five felony counts of criminal mischief and three misdemeanor counts. Uh, When police uh, responded to a burglary in progress at the psychic corner, they found no vodka outside standing near the entrance. The glass at the storefront building was completely smashed out. Television sets were ripped off the wall and money and shards of glass were scattered on the floor. Um, When officers interviewed him, he said he destroyed his words, a white Jeep, and agreed to take police to see his handiwork. Using his own blood, Novotka wrote on the outside of the Jeep, Fear God! Dude, Passover is over! It's and a that's little... lamb's blood! You got it so wrong! It's a little scary. I scared myself when I saw what I did, Novotka was quoted as saying in the affidavit. However, he then told police he is perfectly sane. Oh, yeah. I... God doesn't want you to wreck people's shit, I don't think. Like, that's not really a productive no. way of doing God's work. Like, I feel like, fine, if God is against the psychics and the New Age crystal people, maybe he is, I don't know, we haven't talked about it. But I feel like if he wanted you to be an agent in taking down his opponents, he wouldn't be like, yeah, go down to the strip mall and fuck up that place that sells crystals. That's really going to get my message out to the people. And, and, write in shit on blood. Because who doesn't love that? Yeah. Well, I mean, that'll sell it. If you go to your Old Testament, that... God might ask you to do that. Yeah. Well, no, you go to the Old Testament, God's going to ask you to blow some shit up, honestly. He's not going to ask you to finger paint. No, just, you know, kill your child. Yeah. Walk out of your home country. Kill a lamb and write on the door in its blood True, so that yeah. he doesn't kill your child. Yeah, this, this is not how Passover works. You've got that all wrong. That's what I'm saying. And okay. also, Passover's over. The, you made it. This is... You're free and clear for another year. For everyone out there right now listening to me. If you think, if you have an inkling, if you are convinced that the Lord Almighty has taken time out of his busy cosmic day to have a chat with you, 
I implore you to go and seek the priest, preacher, layperson, whatever of your given faith and get a confirmation of this shit. How are they going to confirm that? Just add. Dude, I think dog. God's not going to give you a fucking notarized memo. No, but it would probably stop something like Signed this from Jehovah, happening. Jehovah, the Almighty. It, like, would, it would probably stop something like this from happening because I'm pretty sure the priest would say, No, my son, God's not talking for, to you. Sit down. Ha have, have some orange juice. Rest. Please do not go paint shit in your own blood and smash up a store. Didn't work out for Jesus, and he was totally telling the truth. Yeah, I guess, but I, I'm I I I don't. If anybody had anything like a notary sealed affidavit, he did, and I just I, I'm pretty sure I just feel get a second opinion. I'm intrigued by the related headline: man claiming to be the devil arrested. Why didn't the prophet take out this guy? Where no. were you there, buddy? Why wasn't there a throwdown on that one? Right? The last one tonight is is magical. <gasps> hey, what? Man who claimed to be the devil and threatened to kill another man before jamming his thumbs in the man's eyes. This is why oh. I didn't read that story. This is why no. I didn't read. Don't go wandering off. Don't go wandering into the dark there. That's why I didn't go there. Was on that guy. He could have saved the dude's eyeballs. Instead, he just fucked up some crystals. That's Good job, Prophet. That's why I didn't go there. Don't, don't wander off. Don't, stay on the path. Don't wander off. That's no fun. <sighs> well, the, the last one is, is amazing and beautiful. Many people sent me this story. Catherine found it. Tons of other people sent it to me. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's it's gorgeous. It's miraculous. It's like it building it up a lot. You look at the headline and, and tell me I'm wrong. And amazingly, here's the best part: no one got hurt. Oh, I saw that, and I people sent me this link, and I didn't read it because I wanted to be to see it with fresh eyes for the show. No one got hurt. This is I love this headline. Meth lab explodes. In man's pants. He was just really happy to see somebody. Portable meth lab exploded in a man's pants Friday while fighting off a state trooper. Uh, the portable meth lab is also known as a one-pot lab or shake-and-bake lab. A small bunch of the drug is manufactured. Shake up the mix and you have the meth, but it's a very volatile mix. David Williams was running from authorities after a traffic stop when one of the officers noticed a chemical smell. When the officer caught up with the 54-year-old, an active meth lab he had been hiding in his pants burst. Williams was not seriously injured when the shaken base device exploded. He was arrested on a complaint of manufacturing controlled substance and a dangerous substance. Oh my god! Of all the... It's so a... you can just carry, like... Portable You meth can lab. make... A meth lab small enough to like carry around? Yeah. The meth thing in a continues bottle. to mystify me. The meth thing continues to fucking confuse and mystify me because one, it's a drug that doesn't seem to do anything good for anybody. And making it could kill you in a really gruesome, terrible way. And it's really difficult. And you're costing the rest of us fucking cold medicine, you <laughs> jerks. I can't get my damn allergy meds because of these fuckers. I can't buy fucking Claritin because you want to fuck yourself up and have your dick explode trying to do it. That's the thing. Oh my I don't god. Get it. What's the upside? Of all the places to put it. I Nowhere near your dick. Well, yeah, Nowhere. I was confused the same way when, like, on in the movies and TV, where you see the guy shove the gun down the front of his pants. I'm like, isn't there something there you would really like to not have shot off? That's like, you know what? You've got a you've got a meth lab in your pants. Why don't you throw a grenade in there while you're at it? May maybe some sharp metal shards, um, 
some napalm, you just just the whole some bleach, some ammonia, just cover all the ba- Why would you put that in your pants? There's very delicate bits down there of, that you don't want you don't want the word explosion anywhere near. Of all the things that we have seen put chicken and steak and even the lobster, even the fucking lobster. Cuz all that can do is pinch you really hard. That can't explode. That can't actually blow your balls off. Yes. But look at all the stuff we've seen people stuff up inside them. Yeah. I've got a glass crack pipe up my up my hoo hoo. Really? Really? A meth lab. Well, I hope you remember not to do your kegels while you've got that up there, because it will fucking shatter and you will be very sad. Like, see, my instinct would not to be. I would move it away from my penis. People, away. Be with, I would be throw it. Be careful with your nooks and crannies because they're the only set you're going to get. I'm, you're not going to get replacement nooks and crannies. It's not like the English muffins. You can't just buy another six pack at the store. You're only getting one set. You should treat them very carefully. They got to last you. They got to last you a long time. Because, you know. Even if you're not into the, the traditionally fun use for them, you're going to need that whole area to pee. LD Socrates, this is one weird PSA. I'm just, just be good to your bits. Be good to That's your bits. That's all I'm bit. saying. It's important. I just you love, need those things. I love the headline, though. That's an meth lab explodes in man's pants. We live in this. This is it is an age of miracles and wonder. That we live in, where a meth lab an enti- can explode. It's an age of some pretty shitty miracles and wonder. If a meth lab's exploding into dude's pants, and the only profit we've got can't do anything but fuck up the psychic friends network. Who didn't see it coming? Not even good psychics. Not even the real thing. True. That, that wasn't I, fighting the devil. That was right down the road. That's an excellent point. You're a psychic. How didn't you see this fucker coming? So they weren't even real psychics. It's just all so disappointing. And the devil was right there putting out some guy's eyeballs. And what did he do about it? Fuck all. Uh, it's not going that story. People get hurt. I don't like those stories. You know I need to make myself feel better. Uh, uh, I'm a happy hippo. He had a meth lab explode in his pants. You'll have to excuse him. It blew off his whole body. <laughs> just. I guess. All right. Where do we start? What do we learn tonight? Um, don't carry a meth lab in your pants. Don't. Be good to your bits. Be good to your bits. Yes. If you're good to your bits, your bits will be good to you. Don't put exploding things. My God, just, you could have, uh, really don't put exploding things anywhere on your person. Yeah, but I, because I, no matter what you blow off, it will be something you will miss. Do you think he woke up the next day thinking to himself, wow, I could have blown off my dick. Huh? Probably not. Hell of a thing there. No. Um. What else did we learn this week? We learned, we learned that you know, if you have the proper paperwork, you can walk away with a bridge. Yeah. If you're if if you have all your your the paperwork in order, it's gonna be a bitch defense though. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> man, if I could do that, I would just put the thing in my backyard just just for the bragging rights. They gave it to me. They'd probably catch you they if you would. just put the railroad bridge in your backyard. They would, but let's face it, once I finally... And we all know this day is coming. Once once I finally reach the day where I have blur gone what I am... Uh, Someday, yes. When I'll I have reached that this point. alone, talking about your nude rampage. Yeah. <sighs> oh, and of course... um. When the naked man accosts you in your car, run. Just run. Just run. 
Don't try to reason with a naked dude headbutting your car. No. It doesn't matter if he takes it and smash it into someone's house. Just run. Leave the fucking scene. Smart. Just run. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, if if you we learn that sometimes you just gotta go. <laughs> God. And nothing will stand in your way. Damn right, man. Jesus Christ. Also, to crap in the Walmart, that's one of the least savory places I could think about comfortably relieving myself, you know? You don't want to go to the bathroom in the if Walmart. He, right. If he had to go so bad that he ran over a bunch of shit I don't, yeah. Notice, we're not talking about comfortably and beggars can't be choosers. True. Like, true. let's not be too fucking precious about this. Any port in a shit storm. Yeah. Um, but, you know, no matter how drunk you are, running over mailboxes is, in fact, illegal. You fucking moron. Find something else to do with your time. You're officially a loser and need a hobby. <laughs> yes, you have it. In- look into internet porn. You haven't discovered something new. If, if Before you go out and thinking you've come up with something new, Google it first. Just to be on the safe side. Um... We've learned that fucking kids today. Right? Fucking Ugh. kids today. Cell phone is a privilege, not a right. Fucking kids. And, uh... Spoiled little shits. We, we also learned that if God has a chat, decides to, to sit you down and have a talk, um, second opinion. Couldn't hurt. Really couldn't Well, and hurt. if God's gonna give you a mission... It's probably not going to be a really stupid, pointless mission. Yeah, it's not going to be like, go smash up this building. Go wait in yeah. your professor's office for, for a big thing of popcorn to explode. It's not going to yeah, be something like, like that. If God's going to personally speak to you and be like, you are a prophet. Here is your thing. Like, your mission as a human. It's not going to be something really dumb. He's going to have you go fight the devil before the devil puts out a dude's eyes. Like, that's all I'm saying. Uh, God would prefer you to be useful and not a moron. And I think that pretty much goes for any story we ever do. Are you sure about that? I think, yes. I think at this point, God's just getting his jollies. This is entertainment. No, I think I think the problem I think is, this is probably pretty exasperating for him because he's like, you know, it took me six days to create you people. I put a lot of thought into it, made you in my own image, gave you everything, and you're just fucking it up so bad. My take on it is God just doesn't have cable. He's like you. He doesn't have cable. He needs something to watch. Well, there's Hulu. That's what I'm <laughs> 